Garakun for the win. Uh oh. What's going on here? Uh oh. Yo, my my party is not set up right here. Meister Janush claps as he greets you with a contented smile. So you managed to track down my messenger, locate this place, and make your way here. Impressive. Very impressive. I see all that training was not in vain. You old scumbag, playing your games. You think we don't know it's a trap? We're ready for anything. Of course it's a trap. Not for you, though, my darling. Octavia, Regengar, you've surpassed all my expectations. I can't help but feel pride in such students. I speak to you now not as slaves. No, you are deserving of your freedom. You have proven I can speak to you as equals. I invite you to become proper members of the Technic League. You will become my left and right hands. You can have all the things this shabby baron could never offer you. Money, slaves, power, access to secret knowledge, and powerful artifacts. We require just one small entry fee. His head. Valerie turns icy. She puts her hand on her weapon, looking at Octavia and Regengar silently, waiting for their answer. Whoa, that's one thing I wasn't ready for. But listen up, you old piece of shit. Do you take us for brainless idiots? You think we've gone through all your training and didn't learn the most important lessons? He looks at Octavia. Lesson one, never trust Maestro Janush in anything. Lesson two, hate Maestro Janush with all of your heart. Enough talk, old teacher. We're here to pass our final exam. Love it. I shall hey. end this oh, suffering. Dude. Oh, this is happening. Do not falter. Um, okay. She just feared all of them. <laughs> and Tristan is like, damn it, girl. I had a spell set up and everything. Way to ruin my AoE. Uh, okay, let's instant enemy the big bro. And let's sense criticals. Sense vitals. And now, Cole, I want to see something amazing from this. Here we go. Not bad, not bad. Solid 60 plus hit there. Applause, please. Attack bonus plus 27. Not bad. Okay. Um. This should do it. A calculated risk. What are we what are you waiting for? He's getting away. We'll catch him. We just need to set these poor people free first. No, we don't forget them. Can't you see the scums getting away? Reg, we can't leave them. We used to be slaves too. And we freed ourselves, Octavia. We owe nothing to these people. Wake up. Living people are burning right in front of you. How can we just let them die? I'm no prophet, but here's my prediction. The prisoners will burn, the Meister will escape, and you'll be standing here arguing. Stop chatting and make a decision. Any decision. Octavia's right, Reg. You didn't free yourselves on your own. Remember, these people need our help. But Janush... Ah, damn it. Fine. Let him roll himself back to Numeria. Calistria is not blind. He'll get him someday. Enough chatting, then. Let's put these idiots out of the fire. Pull these idiots out of the fire. I love you. After giving Regengar a quick hug, Octavia rushes to help the chain slaves. Do I have to do anything? Um. Oh, do I, do I just talk to him? That's it? Yeah, great. That's it. In due time. Okay. Yes. And there he goes. Hey, stop! Damn that scum. He's gone. Regengar kicks the door frame, fust frustrated, and spits on the floor. It's all right. We'll settle the score later. No, we won't. It's over. We'll never see him again. He knows we're stronger now. He won't risk crossing us again. 
But Reg, that's wonderful. Do you realize what you just said? He is afraid of us now. The great Maestro Janush just ran away from us with his tail between his legs. He's running back to the farthest corners of Numeria to sit and hide for the rest of his life. Afraid will come after him. The annoyance on Regengar's face slowly fades into a contented grin. Haha, <laughs> you're right! That piece of shit's gonna see us in his nightmares for the rest of his life. Nice. Search Janusha's study. Oh, I will search his study, alright. Search it for loots! Maestro Janusha's diary. Oh. Oh, look at the third paragraph. He's dreaming. Worthless stupid dreams. Again, the same wench as before. All night long. Promising me a crown and a throne in exchange for some piece of garbage from the stolen lands. Sound familiar? Now Nerissa comes even during my midday naps. She's so impatient. I'm going crazy. Nerissa keeps hiding her face from me for the third night in a row. I'm trying to sleep both at night and during the day. I need some sign to know what I'm doing is what I'm supposed to do. Damn. My dream was short, but I got what I'd been craving. A light touch from Mrs. Nerissa was all I needed. She gave me a chance. My head won't touch the pillow again until I kill the Baron. That filth will pay for all he's done. Or my life is over. I will not disappoint my mistress. Who is Nerissa? Well, as we can kind of confer, infer from this diary, Nerissa is the person who is going around and promising people crowns and thrones, kind of like the stag lord, kind of like she did to us. Something sound familiar about a fae coming to us and offering us a throne and a kingdom? Yeah, it's all the same thing. All the same thing. Okay, save it. Get it. Uh, no, I'm embarrassed. It's a forty-three. Whoa. Uh, hold on now. Hold on now. You uh, require my this. assistance. Aborone sentence. Ready and willing. Uh, What's new? Dex. Mimosi Travisi. I'm listening. Okay. Uh, bless adds to comp competency. Amorone Centers. Although I don't think Bless stacks with heroism. What's the holdup? Here we go. I've broken a nail! Yeah, our modifier is 32. Ooh, this is going to be rough. As a fan of Neverwinter Nights 2, would you recommend this game to me? Yes, I would. Have the complaints since launch been ironed out? About 90% of them have, yes. I've broken a nail. Yes. Um, this, this game right now is a completely different game from when I played it. When I played this game when it came out, every uh, single no, thing I did, I had to worry about bugging. Whenever I finished a quest, the first thing I would do is I would go, okay, did that work as it was supposed to? Okay, they said this was going to happen. Did that happen? Like, it was, it, to be blunt, it was pretty terrible when it came out. Now, here we are about a half year later, and it is arguably one of the best CRPGs I've played since Baldur's Gate 2. Um, it is, it is, it is pretty damn phenomenal. The problem is finally solved, and we have an instant report on all damages sustained by our organization. The company of the Technomancers and their robotic escorts deployed at your command have finally eliminated this nuisance. I regret to inform you that very few of our men have survived the assault. The Mimrodon and lower class robots have been reduced to parts, and only one of our two precious annihilators is still in service, although heavily damaged and beyond our capabilities to repair. At least, the case of this disaster on Numeria is finally closed for good, and on the complete reports and the complete reports will be sent to you as soon as possible. In the meantime, I can shed some light on the main lines of the inquiry at play here. For the moment, this seems to have been the work of a small group of powerful and well-organized individuals referred to as the Five Disasters. Until further information is recovered, one android, android, 
unregistered with four arms and heavily customized cyberware, which is what was allowed to cause what allowed it to cause such heavy damage with crippling and often fatal explosives. We have not been able to repair it and put it to use. All that we've been able to extract is a chunk of strange nanite cloud that settles into a tangible form and some largely corrupted data. For now, our restoration efforts have only succeeded in extracting a self-identification of gears and several reoccurring names. Alonial, Seya, Shindra, Elfrida, Max, Bailey, and Sandily. We are hopeful that the names of the disasters are among them, as this is the only promising starting point for our investigation. What seems to be a female angel possessing wings and the powerful holy aura, who greatly de delayed the execution of the disasters through her sustained curative powers. With her support, the disasters seem to heal faster than they could be damaged, and with each heal, one of our men seemed to suffer a backlash and spontaneously combust. A female devil or similar beast, horns, tails, small pointed fangs, extremely nimble. She was the last to fall, even though her damage output did not seem to match that of her peers. She seemed untouchable until the Annihilator obliterated the general region she was last seen in. A human female with very strange powers, attacking our troops with a combination of a bow and mysterious singing. She seems to have caused sporadic mutations and a burst of aggression in her allies during the battle. No traces of her or mutations remain afterwards, though we are still investigating. The last case is quite unusual, because, you know, everything we've read so far isn't, uh, and resists easy classification. An elven male, or possibly half-elf in appearance, he threw himself into the fray drooling with rage and unleashing a storm of steel and lead with a blade and a handgun. Between two assaults, the android scratched him, and he changed into a massive sixth-armed creature made of water, wreaking havoc among our ranks with claws, fangs, and weapons. There is clearly still much to investigate. The aforementioned disasters seem to be behind the deaths of our agents and led to the end of our activity in the Scar of the Spider and the Feldale side, forcing us to return to our headquarters at Starfall. Their true intentions and the motivations behind their hostilities are still unknown. Our teams have always been assaulted without a word. Despite this hard blow, you will be happy to know that our activity in Numeria should have been resumed by the time this message will have reached you. I attached to this letter a box containing the remains of the android. The nanites take, for take form and fuse, but seem practically inert and unresponsive to our experts and analysis machines. Maybe you can find some use for them. I want to play this game in that part of the world. I I want to I want everything I just read to be the main story of my game. Um that is that that stuff like with the androids and the robots and the technology and the like, oh, it's we can't repair this cuz we don't know how. Like that stuff is so my jam. Um I really really hope we see that part of the world someday. Um, cause yeah, oof. I remember reading that note the first time and just freaking out. Cause I was like, I have no idea that that kind of stuff was in this world. Like I, I had no idea that in the Pathfinder DLC, there's robots, there's ancient technology, there's cyberware, there's hacking, there's like co complex machinery. I mean, there could be an entire city somewhere. That's like a, like a cyberpunk world. Um, oh, it's so cool, man. Okay. Anyway, this is what we got. The nanites inside the item provide the wearer with multiple abilities. Owner gets plus one bonus to all attack rolls with bombs. Owner gives a plus two saving throw against mind affecting death and paralysis stuns. Owner's bombs deal additional dice of damage as they were an alchemist two levels higher. Woo! Well. Boop. Nice. Okay. Hey, Dimitri. Uh, okay. Kind of awesome. Now, do I have to do anything with Quiet. that device? I'm thinking. Does it just work? I guess it just works. I have, I should have focusing surge. Dobbs, just Dobbs. Thank you very much, man. Uh, oh, I do know that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, uh, thank you very much, Dobbs, just Dobbs. Yeah, I can, I can definitely do that. And I appreciate your, uh, your 11 months, dude. So wait, do I have focusing surge now as a free action? Is this it right here? Yeah, that's it right there. 
Okay. Fast healing and immunity to a bunch of stuff and bestows targeted bomb admixture. My lord, dude. That is obscene. Um, I want to put that down there. Mm. I need to use those force bombs more. Hmm. Cool. Okay, let's save it. Oh, I wonder if they fixed this bug. Um, let me see if they fixed this. Watch up here and save. Nope. Such a weird bug. For some reason, like, there's only a few items that do it. But if I, if I move an item to my hotbar and then I save the game, it disappears. I don't know. Uh, Simon with the three years. Dude, thank you for that. We appreciate you being here. Chiasa and Happy Feet Switch, thank you for your cheers. Thank you, thank you. Okay, can we do something here? Here we go. Well, well, what have we here? Reg, take a look at this. What is it? Whoa, by Callistria's tits. This is, found something interesting here. The Meister was in such a hurry to leave that he left some pretty interesting, left something pretty interesting behind. What'd you find? These are Maestro's ledgers. All his accounting for the last, let's see, 10, 20, yes, for the last 30 years. Do you know what this means? Some value. I thought you found work notes or research results. Well, everyone has their own idea of value, I guess. How do you not understand? It means this is somewhere in these pages is me and Octavia when we were bought for how much, from where, maybe even from who. I'm not all that interested in my tribe, really. I already know who they are. Piles of shit who sell their children into slavery. But it might be interesting to pay them a visit, maybe spit into their faces personally. It'll take some time to make sense of the ledger. We may not find anything, or we may find something and regret ever looking. But I still want to know the truth. I want to understand who I am and where I come from. I think that makes sense. All according to plan. All right. Well, great. This was awesome. We got some great loot. We got a lot of stuff to sell. Um, yeah. This is awesome, man. Let's go home and do a big sell by a lot of BP. And then maybe some kingdom dev. Yeah, and 3.2k XP. That doesn't hurt either, right? That's a lot of XP, dudes. That is a lot of XP. Uh, okay, we're going to save it and head back. Oh, wait, you know what? Okay, if we go here, one day, eight hours. If we go here, oh my lord. It's, <clears throat> okay, we'll find it. Sure. <laughs> Guess that didn't quite work as planned, did it? Oh, God, another thing? Oh, Jesus, man. <laughs> we have so many problems right now that we can't do. This hurts. Oof. Hey, Johnny. I need to catch my breath. Okay. First, let's save it, and then we're going to do the Jamandi thing. My strength betrays me. Uh, Night X7 says, is this game much different than from launch? Oh, yeah, dude. It's, it's like a different game. It's like a different game. It's it's ba like what it was on launch was a half-finished early access product. What it is now is possibly the best CRPG since Baldur's Gate 2. So... A little different. <laughs> a little a little different. Yeah. Your Grace, we have urgent news from Jamandi Aldori. The Sword Lord is asking for aid with an unusual problem. Here is her letter. Please read it when you have a moment. Lady Aldori asks you to head to Varnhold at once. Oh god, Act 4 just started. Oh shit. Uh, the letter suddenly ceased. As you may expect, this is a matter of some concern. Jamani Aldori expects you to help with this matter, for she knows for your good relations uh, with Magar. She asks you to go to Varnhold and find out why they have fallen silent. Why would the Swords care about Varnhold? Uh, she seeks allies with anyone who has proven herself trustworthy. What do we know about Varnhold? It's a barony much alike our own. Uh, it was also established by a mercenary, Magar Varn. Uh, what do you think has happened to it? 
a riot, a rebellion? But if that were the case, there would be refugees. Whatever happened there, it must have been sudden indeed. Perhaps a bandit attack, barbarians, a plague? Whatever it was, no one outside Varnhold seems to know what happened. Maybe Varn simply decided to stop dealing with Restov? Judging by Aldori's letter, the silence doesn't seem voluntary. Otherwise, at least one person would have reached a neighbor and spoken about what had happened there. Also, it's important to mention, we were just at Varnhold, and they were doing great! I mean, they had some issues, but they were handling them. So, Varnhold isn't far off. We should find out what happened before the same fate befalls us, too. And it's time to gather a party and venture forth. This time, the disaster didn't hit us, but our neighbors. Varnhold, a small town east of our barony, had been deserted in an instant. All right. So this, this is where, to put, to put it bluntly, this is where shit gets real. Um, God, this is nice. <gasps> Doubles movement speed on mountainous terrain? Oh, that's so good! Ah! Um. That's a new one. Kaliki's a DLC character, so that's that's brand new. We should gather all strength. Okay. Uh, let's see here. So first, we need to bring up our buddy Mega or uh, our this guy. Yep. Uh, we're gonna take all this off. So what I want to do is I want to have a set of gear ready, a varied set of gear, so that whenever we bring out these other characters, we can at least pop some basic stuff on them. So everyone has their weapon set, which we're gonna be keeping on them. That's not going anywhere. Um, Ekin, you got a nice bow, right? Yeah, you got a decent bow. But what we need now is basically a set of gear so we can put basic stuff on people as we bring them in and out of the party. So what we'll do is we'll put in this ring, because it's a decent ring. Uh, we'll put in a, a tri belt. Um, we'll put in, see those will sell. That's okay. We'll put in a, a necklace of armor plus two. Put in a cloak of resistance. Uh, that's okay. Those I'm going to put in just because they work well on Ekin. And I think we're going to sell like everything else. I think we're going to sell like everything else. Um... Oh, and maybe maybe one one um, one medium breastplate option, and one light breastplate option, and a second ring of protection. What's this do? Oh, we can sell that. Okay. Okay. I think we're set. Any news from the Pantheon devs? Um, still waiting to, for them to confirm our next date. Yeah, we, we are we are currently in the uh, standby period. Um, we have agreed to do the stream for Pantheon. It's probably going to be in anywhere from three weeks to a month, uh, but we do not have a date yet. So as, as you guys know, I am completely at the mercy of the Pantheon devs. I never want to rush them for a second. They can take all the time they need, and I'm happy to participate whenever they're ready. So... Whenever we get to it, we get to it. But I am not rushing anything. I will just keep you guys posted as I know. Uh, we, gave, we gave some coins away, some dog tags. Great. Do we have any new artifacts? Probably not. Yeah, no. Not yet. Okay. Uh, let's do a rest. Let's save it. And then we'll do a rest. We should gather all strength. Yeah, I know. I know. Okay. Bloop. Sorry. Um. Boop. Mm. Mm. Do, 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 do. Okay. I did miss Chaotica. Yeah, we talked about that a little bit yesterday. Co, these lands are like a forest. Everyone is hungry and all keep constant watch on their predators and their prey. What you need is ears, by which I mean spies. We don't have any yet, but others do. They're planting them among us. I must stay in the shadows so I can catch them. Don't tell anybody I'm your head of espionage. Simply tell them I'm a minister. Keep it simple. 
Man, Ekin, Ekin is... Okay, that's like the best thing he could have said to start with. Um, that's kind of great. A crowded caravan has arrived, the kind that often carries illegal goods. The guards searched the caravan and found a stash, but it didn't have potions or artifacts. It contains spying equipment. It's unclear who the spy is, but he's clearly experienced. He has fine tools, four cell phones, a laptop, and a thumb drive full of spyware. So topical. We must catch the spy to track down his master. This is an animal that must be stalked quietly. We need to tail on every member of the caravan, but let them keep back. No threats, no torture. There's only one spy. The others are not at fault. Um, who, in your opinion, sent the spy? An enemy, a neighbor, an inquisitive mind. We haven't picked up the trail yet. We must keep looking. I trust your opinion. Yeah, I think Ekin's going to make a great spy master, to be honest. I'll order the guards to keep an eye on the merchants. Oh, scouting the northern regions, scouting the central regions. So we got we got some new stuff. Interesting. Co-spy. There are no spies in your kingdom, Co. I promise. Oh, good. You know that's that's great. Um, that I feel so much better. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look at that triumph. Two espionage, but bam. That's what I'm talking about, dog. Okay, save it. Now, I hate to say it cuz I have all these amazing projects I want to do, but I have to I have to make sure these problems come first. Um I think we have one for Jubilos, don't we? Yeah, there it is. Okay, so we're going to do this one with him. Oh, man, I am not looking good. To the, or I'm very worried about those. I will say, so though, this is pretty amazing. One thing that is awesome that we did not have in our last playthrough is we have this incredibly cool building in Ceratopia. We have this incredibly cool building here called an aviary. Allows governing the barony from adjacent regions, even if those regions are not a part of the barony. So what's amazing about this is by putting this building where it is, I think that all three of these regions count as adjacent, which means as we're traveling through these regions, we'll have full access to our kingdom. If you guys remember... In my first game, I kept having to travel back and forth, back and forth, because I had to dip into our kingdom to make sure that we could keep up with the kingdom events. Now we just don't need to. Now we can just do whatever we want and go wherever we want. And for the entire right side of the map, we can manage our kingdom. That is such a huge amount of stress off. Like, and it's going to save us so much time. Um, that's like, that alone is playthrough changing. Um, oh, man. The, the stress is just going to evaporate because what was really unfortunate was um, in our last run, there's a few areas that you get locked into being in those areas for like weeks at a time. And we would do those areas and spend like hours clearing out these dungeons. And then we would go back into our territory and it would be like failure, disaster, failure. And it's just like, ah, cause you can't save scum those. <laughs> so, Oh, yeah, this is going to be nice. This is going to be nice. We don't have to worry about that anymore. Okay. Uh, I think it's time for a big sell. Let's go Let's go sell. Your problems are going to end in two months. Please check the expiry date. Oh, good. Even, well, yeah, I know the, the problems all have longer times now. So that's great. That Focus is great. On the goal. Very happy about that. Uh, Mod Modthrith, I did go ahead and des decide that I'm not going to do any DLC until I catch up to my old game. I'm just kind of, I'm laser focused on catching up to my old game. I, I want this game to be our Pathfinder, what? That moment you remember something happening, but don't remember what the something is. As it should be. In due time. Oh, what's up, Bloom Girl? 
What are we doing? Where are you rushing off to, my hound? To face your own death. God, I love her voice acting. Why are you here? Gonna try to kill me again? Why am I here? Kill you? <laughs> not today. Believe it or not, but I came here without evil intentions. I've been watching you, my hound. You've escaped my trap. You've destroyed my beautiful Everbloom flower. Such a strong will to live in such a fragile, mortal creature. Once, long ago, it hurt me to see flowers being torn apart by the wind. But today, I watch you thrashing like a moth caught in a spider web. And I cannot turn my eyes away. Uh, no, for, for those, I'm seeing, it's, it's, it's so fun every time this person does voice acting, because chat always erupts. It's so great. This is Amelia Tyler. She is the voice of Malady from DOS2. She has lots of great voice uh, credits to her, her name these days. She is Narissa in this game. She is um, one of the voice types in uh, a, a big game that came out recently. I don't remember what the, the game was, but she was like the, the cheerful uh, female voice in that one. But yeah, she, she is blowing up. Uh, but her name is Amelia Tyler, and uh, she's one of the reasons I gave this game voice acting of the year. There's lots of great voice acting in this game when it happens. It just doesn't unfortunately happen that often. But when it does happen, it's super good. And uh, yeah, she's great. Uh, very cool. If I'm a moth caught in a spider's web, what then are you, the spider? I am the web itself. The moment you took your first step on the road of the stolen lands, you fell under my power. I always find it funny when people, like so many people in chat right now are like, she sounds like this person, or she sounds like this person. It's like, actually, she sounds like Amelia Tyler. <laughs> but what's really funny is whenever, like, that's the exact same thing that happens between Troy Baker and Matt Mercer. Hey, that sounds like Troy Baker. Hey, that sounds like Matt Mercer. And it's like, they're always the other person. <laughs> All right. Um, so you were the one behind the bloom. What have I or my subjects ever done to you? There was a time when I used to ask myself the same question. What had I and my thousand breaths ever done to them? Why had I to endure this? You were wrong to think that your problems began with you. The ever-blooming flower was created long before your barony was founded. I prepared my weapon long in advance. Having no idea what I would turn it against. Everything has a price. Thousands of lives must be turned to dust for a single act of forgiveness. I have visited the first world and learned something about you and about your curse. How? But there's no point in asking. My untamed home world has many miracles to offer. One can never know what they will reveal or to whom. So, what do you think of the proud, bitter, fallen nymph now, my hound? I have no gr hold no grudge against you, despite everything you've done to me and my people. How can a ruler so easily shake off the trouble that strikes his realm? I see everything. Soon you will turn to dust, together with your whole barony. The way I see it is that the person really at fault is the person that tasked her with doing this. I mean, yeah, Nerissa's kind of evil, and or the Guardian, <laughs> the Guardian of the Bloom is kind of evil, um, but none of this would be happening if that person didn't curse her to do it from what we saw in the first world. So I, my character, Ko the Ranger, he, he saw all that, man. He doesn't really hold a big grudge against her. He understands she's a puppet, man. She's being manipulated. No, it's not a spoiler. We already did the, uh, we, we, we did the, the bloom already. So we saw all this happen. Yeah. How about telling me your, now what we don't know yet, what we don't know is who the guy is that cursed her why he decided to curse her the way he did. And yeah, we, we barely know anything about the dude that actually is responsible for all this. Um, I didn't even get to that point in my last playthrough. So we, we will be discovering a lot of that during this run. How about telling me your real name? Names can be weapons in capable hands. You've no need to know my name. 
no need. Okay. The troubles in Varnhold, do you have something to do with it? I can answer, but will you believe me? I have nothing to do with it. But I know who is responsible. I won't tell you, though. Run now towards your death, hound. Run, hound, run! I want to see you stumble. I will ask again. Why are you here? Give me an honest answer. It seems pointless to have a conversation of hints and hidden meanings. Why shouldn't the mistress visit her pet? Farewell, my hound. Whoa. You have no idea what powers you've awakened, and now you voluntarily rush into their jaws. If you run your blade down their throats, I won't be disappointed. If you perish, I'll have forgotten you by dawn. Okay. <laughs> well, that was a fun conversation. Um, All according to plan. Lots of great stuff there. <laughs> I know Dub Live. I hear you, man. Uh, check Dub Live. Check the officer uh, Discord when you have a sec. Follow. Mm -hmm. Have I beat Outward? I did beat one of the Outward factions. Um, I do want to do more Outward down the road, but I, I did beat um, the Levant faction. Yeah, and I had I played I did I beat the Levant faction as a gun mage, and it was awesome. Uh, one of my favorite open world RPG experiences was Outward. In fact, now that I've finished it, I liked it better than Gothic and Elix. I did. I liked Outward more than Gothic and Elix. I did. It's the first time I've said that. Um, yeah. Yeah, I did. It was just, I just had a huge amount of fun with it. It was super cool. Uh, what is this guy doing? Why are you standing in that, citizen? What is the meaning behind this? And now you're bowing at me from it? Okay. Anyway, we've got a lot of stuff to do in this game. We've got many, many things to do, and we're going to do those things this afternoon. What we're going to do is we're going to start this afternoon with a big sell, and then I think we're going to start trucking right into Act 4. Um, pretty 